it's not a system that's uh, based on uh, calories in, calories out. It's a system that's based on hormonal control of enzyme activity. Uh, sadly, your metabolism doesn't work like math. In fact, your biology, crazily enough, works like biology. To understand the biology of why we get fat, let's forget about the stupidly simple math of calories in versus calories out. Instead, I want you to think of your body as a biological starship, one that's way cooler than the Enterprise, the Millennium Falcon, or any other starship you've seen in the movies. We'll call our starship the Nautilus. Uh, no, the Nautilus. Thank you. The Nautilus is the amazing vehicle that carries you through the universe as you explore new worlds, save friendly creatures from the forces of evil, and occasionally get into trouble with your parents. Tommy! You're in the captain's chair, so you can decide where the Nautilus will go and what missions it will try to accomplish. That's the good news. Now here's the not so good news. You can't change how the Nautilus works. It was designed by nature at the dawn of time, and it's at least a thousand times more complicated than anything built by NASA. The best we can do is try to understand how it works. Mr. Spot, the ship's science officer, has been studying the Nautilus for decades. So has Dr. Fishbones, the ship's medical officer. They're still learning about the Nautilus, but there's a lot they already know. That's correct, Captain. We know the Nautilus depends on a supercomputer we call the brain. We also know the crew members are actually biological software applications, or what your Earth children call apps. They perform most of the ship's work automatically. Thanks for that dry scientific explanation, Spot. Here's what you need to understand, Captain. Life aboard the Nautilus is only possible because of how the crew members work together. Our crew is fantastic, amazing, stupendous. They're all that and a sight of moonbeams, as your Earth children might say. I'm pretty sure my Earth children wouldn't say that, but Dr. Fishbones is right about this. The biological software applications that keep the Nautilus flying are fantastic. But as a software programmer myself, I know that even the coolest apps on the planet can only do what they've been programmed to do, not what you want them to do. When I'm playing frisbee golf on our Wii, I can't just decide I'm going to reach the green on the 17th hole with one throw. That's how I want the app to work, and in my opinion, that's how it should work. But an app doesn't know or care how we want it to work. When you click a mouse, type on a keyboard, tap a screen, or fiddle with a remote, you send the app a message. The app responds to the message by running instructions that were written in a computer language like Java or C+. That's how all apps work. It's the same with the Nautilus. Everything about you, from the color of your eyes to the size of your belly, is the result of your biological applications following instructions that are triggered by chemical messages. And guess what? Everything you eat sends a chemical message. You have to eat, of course. As the Nautilus explores the universe, it burns a lot of fuel. It also requires daily rebuilding and repairs, which means it constantly needs new building materials. The fuels and building materials are both delivered through a single hatch, so we'll call them both by the same name, FUD. As the captain, you can choose what kind of FUD goes through the hatch, but you can't choose what the Nautilus will do with the FUD. Those decisions are made by the ship's chief engineer, an absolutely amazing app we'll call Marty Metabolism, or just Marty for short. Marty is probably the most important member of the entire crew. We'll let Dr. Fishbones explain why. Marty's responsibilities are enormous. He's in charge of all the building and repair projects. He keeps the engines running. He controls the heating system. He monitors and manages the fuel supply and he has to do all those jobs at the same time every hour of every day. We couldn't do anything without him. He's amazing. You may have heard that some people have a fast metabolism while others have a slow metabolism. So what exactly does that mean? I'll explain, Captain. Suppose Marty believes the ship is too heavy to fly. The logical solution is to burn away some of the stored fuel. So he opens the windows to let in cold air. Then he turns up the heating system. 
He turns on all the lights and monitors. He orders his building crews to tear down and rebuild sections of the ship. The Nautilus is now using fuel at a high rate, so we would say it has a fast metabolism. Now suppose Marty is concerned we won't have enough fuel to reach our next destination. So he closes the windows, turns off the lights and monitors, stops all the repair work, and turns the thermostat down to 60 degrees. When Dr. Fishbones complains of being cold, Marty gives him a big, ugly sweater to keep warm. Hey! The ship is now using fuel at a much lower rate, so we would say it has a slow metabolism. Your job as the captain would certainly be easier if you could just send orders directly to Marty like this. Marty, I want to lose 10 pounds before summer. Crank up all the systems and burn extra fat. Aye, Captain. I'm giving her all I got. Unfortunately, that's not how the Nautilus was programmed. As an app, Marty doesn't know or care what you want. He simply responds to messages. The brain and the crew send alerts and commands to each other through chemical messengers called hormones. When Marty receives a message, it's often a command, such as build bigger muscles or store more fat. To follow those commands, Marty has to adjust how much FUD he burns for energy, how much he stores as fat, and how much he converts into building materials. For example, one of the instructions programmed into the Nautilus is to keep building a taller ship for the first 15 to 20 years. To grow taller, you have to consume more calories than you burn. If we applied the piggy bank theory, we would explain growing taller like this. As you can see, there are 2,000 calories in one inch of muscle and bone. Therefore, if you consume an extra 100 calories per day for 20 days, you'll become exactly one inch taller. It's quite simple. Wow, wouldn't that be great? If you were on the short side, you could just keep eating and eating and eating until you were nine feet tall and then go play in the NBA. Well, maybe not. The point is, consuming more calories than they burn only explains how kids grow taller. It doesn't explain why they grow taller. Correct, Captain. The Nautilus grows taller because the brain triggers what we call the Get Taller program, which tells Marty to build bigger bones, muscles, and organs. To make sure you deliver the extra building materials he needs, Marty triggers what we call the Get Hungry program, so you eat more. And that's all about chemistry, not character. Getting fat is also about chemistry. It begins when those chemical messengers called hormones tell Marty to convert more FUD into fat and store it away. To obey that command, Marty will fire up the Get Hungry program to tell you, as the captain, to deliver more FUD through the hatch. But let's suppose you respond like this. Marty, we're not stopping for FUD. I want to lose some weight. Great goggly muggly. In that case, Marty will find another way to make sure you consume more calories than you burn. Even if you cut your calories by 500 per day, it's very likely that your metabolism will slow down and burn 600, 700, 800 fewer calories per day. When you try to starve yourself into losing weight, the crew of the Nautilus doesn't know or care that you want to look better in a swimsuit. They just know the ship is breaking down and running out of fuel. So they send distress messages to Marty. Remember the mice who had their calories cut by 5% but ended up with bigger fat cells? The mouse version of Marty interpreted less food as a starvation emergency. Great googly moogly. So he slowed down their metabolisms to store extra fat and burned muscle tissue for fuel. That's why advice based on the piggy bank theory can completely backfire. You try starving yourself, but the crew keeps blasting hunger alerts, Marty slows down your metabolism, and soon the ship starts wobbling and breaking down. That's when you finally say, I can't stand this anymore, I give up. Nobody will voluntarily be hungry for their entire lives. So it's not sustainable, they will go back to eating a normal amount, but then their metabolism will stay depressed, and they will experience what researchers call, this is the technical term, fat superaccumulation. So you not only gain back the weight you lost, there's a good chance you gain back even more. And who do you blame? You know, if you just stick to your diet and eat a little less, you wouldn't be so fat. Probably yourself. Maybe with a little help from these guys. Yeah, or get off your butt and move once in a while. 
If there's one thing I hope you understand after watching this film, it's this. If you tried to lose weight by following advice based on the piggy bank theory and couldn't do it, you didn't fail. The piggy bank theory failed. It failed because it's based on simple math that works fine and dandy with a piggy bank, but not with human biology. Because that's not how our bodies are programmed. Now here's the good news. You can lose the extra weight. I've done it and so have millions of other people. But to burn away the fat and keep it off, you have to send the right messages to the crew of the Nautilus. And everything you eat sends a message. Gaining and losing weight isn't about your character. It's about chemistry.